before we start singing a song, I just want to share a little piece with you that is on my heart. To me and to us, this could be quite an Easter that no one has ever had before. We are locked behind doors. We are cut away from friends. We are cut away from family. We are cut away from brothers and sisters in church. But this evening, I want to invite you to connect with one another to what we call the foundation of our faith. Not only did Jesus die, but he rose again. And it's because of that that we have hope. It's because of that that we are meeting right now online to find again that hope. And sometimes we don't think of that hope. Sometimes we think of other things during Easter. But it's because we are in a difficult situation. The Lord has allowed it so that we will celebrate Him. If we have nothing else to celebrate for ourselves, we celebrate the altar of our faith. And maybe you feel like what this next song is going to say. I want to encourage you. I want you to listen. I want you to sing along. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
reading from Mark 15, 21, 41. A passerby named Simon, who was from Serene, was coming in from the countryside just then, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus, and they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him wine drugged with myrrh, but he refused it. Then the soldiers nailed him to the cross. They divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each piece. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. A sign announced a charge against him. It read, the King of the Jews. They, they crucified, crucified two, two rebels, rebels with him, him. One, one on his, on his right, right and one, and one on, on his left. left. Those who, who passed by hurled insults at him, him shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going, going to, destroy to destroy the temple and build it in three days, in the same way, the chief priests and the, and the teachers, teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. On him. Praise be the Lord. Amen. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then, at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour, sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, he said. Let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Then... Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Verse 14. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. So we're going to be taking communion now. Um, I often think about communion and, and um, you know, that night, that the, the night that Jesus had his last supper with his disciples and, and he took the bread and, and, and the wine and, and, and said what he said and and, and what it means to us today, you know, Jesus even in the scripture says, do this in remembrance of him. And so this evening, while you're taking your communion, let's, let's ponder what Jesus actually did for us and what that sacrifice actually means for us, for you and for me. And uh, Caden's going to read the scripture uh, for us. I'm going to be reading after Matthew 26, verse 26. As they were eating... Jesus took some of the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. Uh, verse 27, it says, And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Amen. Let's take the cup. We're going to take a moment just to pray now. Dear Lord God, we just take this moment, Father, and we do remember what you did on the cross for us, Father, that night. We thank you, Lord, that we can have healing in your name, Lord. We can, yes. Lord, our sins are forgiven because of your blood on the cross, Father. We thank you for your great sacrifice. We thank you for the love that you poured out upon the whole world, Father, Lord. 
I just thank you, Lord Jesus, Father, for that incredible moment, Father, that you gave us all hope yes. and life, Father. And we just give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to go back into worship now. And uh, I just ask that you continue to, to focus in on what Jesus did for you that, that special day. In Jesus' name. just the right time and he died for our sins. Verse 7. Now most people will not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. Verse 8. But God showed his great love by, for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. 9. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condem condemnation. Verse 10, for since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. Verse 11, so now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking the command, as Adam, who was a pattern of one to come. But the gift is not like trespass, for if many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many. May the Lord God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Good evening, church. You are welcome to this special Good Friday service. We trust that the Lord has been so good to you. And we also trust that you have been blessed by that worship session. And I hope also that you took part in the communion. It's a lovely thing to do. 
Now we proceed into the word. My prayer is that the Lord will also speak to us and we worship him even as we listen to his word. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity you've given unto us to connect once more with one another and with you in worship, in communion, and in hearing your word. Lord, as we go into your word, we welcome you by your spirit to teach us, to inspire us, and to enlighten our heart to receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You are welcome once again. This is Hope Church online service. And this evening is a special Good Friday uh, service. And we trust that the Lord will bless us. You see, we celebrate uh, this time, this Easter weekend. We celebrate the Good Friday and then the Easter come Sunday or uh, Easter Monday. Some of us, so people also uh, celebrate. But today... As we look into the word, I will say to me, it's not just Good Friday, but to me, it is the best Friday. Just a short story of how I came to become a Christian. It happened to be at a period like this during an, um, Good Friday and Easter celebration time. And someone invited me to a program or a conference, which to honor the person I attended that conference, there the Lord met with me. And to me, this period, I'll say Good Friday to me is the best Friday. And today I believe that you will have reason also to see today as the best Friday. A time that we celebrate the going to the cross of our Lord Jesus and dying in our place to bring us salvation. So as we go into this, I just want to read from the scripture. You see, the script in the gospel, uh, both Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they have an account of what we believe happened this period when Jesus was, you know, arrested and taken to be tried, which is, which was one of, let me not just say one, which was um, a most injustice trial ever. But he went through it and he was crucified and buried but in the book of isaiah 53 isaiah gave us a summary of what happened which i would like us to read in isaiah 53 i read from verse 3 it said he was despised and rejected by mankind my mankind a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from whom people hide their faces he was despised and he held his and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquity. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we were healed. We all like sheep has gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet we did not open yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet whom of his generation protested. For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his debt. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin. He will see his off, offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. 
by his knowledge my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquity amen if you look at this account he gave a summary of what jesus came to accomplish what he went to the cross for what he suffered he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our sin and the punishment that brought us peace was laid upon him i would like to paint a scenario and will reference some other scriptures like i said it is my best friday a friday i accepted the lord jesus as my savior a week uh, an easter weekend program just like this was when that happened to me but look at how we can see it and it was in fact how i presented it you know to one of the some of my friends you see after that encounter it dawned on me and which i believe to many of us that we owe a debt it's like being in a huge debt and that debt is increasing every day and it's a debt that you and I cannot pay. And it's a debt that ultimately will cause us to lose our life. It ultimately will rob us of our peace. Ultimately, people are going into depression as you can know when you are in debt that you cannot pay. But this one is much more than that. So it's like I was in a debt I cannot pay. You and I were in a debt that we cannot pay. And that debt is growing and increasing every day and ultimately that death will destroy and our uh, will destroy our life it will destroy our offspring it will destroy everything that we hold dear but because we cannot pay we are in serious dilemma with no solution but the same person that we owe that debt to in his great love for us came or uh, sent his only begotten son to pay that debt. So you can understand why it should be the best Friday for us. A time when a debt that we cannot pay, a debt that is growing by the day, a debt that will ultimately destroy us and cut us off completely from life and good uh, relationship with God that he intended for us. But he stepped in to pay the debt. I remember with my own situation after I accepted the Lord as my Savior, as I said earlier in a weekend, uh, um, Easter weekend like this, I was led, you know, I believe the Lord impressed it in my heart. I went looking for my close friends, those that I can, I can reach at that time. And the story I presented to them is that um i've come to see them for a very important issue they say what it is they say i was involved in a crime and i was arrested and so when they arrested me for some reason i was given pardon and that they've sent me to go and bring my accomplices they said what do i mean what did i do i said i told them i've been living in sin and they are part of my accomplices you know it sounded funny but then it wasn't funny you know, I presented Jesus to them. I just told them my story. You know, I was in this program and the preacher was just talking about the goodness of God, what the Lord is doing in people's life, how he's transforming people's life, how he's turning people's life around, giving them peace, giving them reason to live and purpose to live for. And I just thought to myself, hmm, I could do with that. I need such an experience. And I just accepted the Lord at that point and this has been my experience and I have been led uh, in I have been led to go and bring my accomplices so I've come to talk to them also to accept Jesus as their savior you know so that's a debt that we all owe a debt that we cannot pay in Romans chapter 3 verse 10 it says as it is written there is no one righteous not even one you and I no one righteous. We have been trying our own self, you know, to live a righteous life, but we keep falling. It's just like the debt that we owe that keeps increasing that we cannot pay. And in Romans chapter, that's a Roman chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That debt that we owe 
kept increasing and is making us to uh, has made us to fall short of the glory of God. The glory of the glory the God the Lord has for us. We've fallen short of it. We've missed it. We've missed the mark, and it's happening by the minute. We are in, we are getting deep and deep into debt, into sin by the minute, and we can't we couldn't save ourselves. That is the situation that we are in. That is the debt that we owe. And you see, the consequences of this debt is huge. As I mentioned earlier, the debt is leading us into depression. It is leading us farther away from God because we cannot pay it. It's increasing and we are in danger of you know, um, uh, uh, losing the good life the Lord has for us. We are in danger of losing our peace. We are in danger of losing every blessing he has for us. If we are uh, equated to someone having a mortgage that he couldn't pay and he's defaulting on it, the interest is rising every day, eventually that person will lose his house, he will become homeless and sometimes from being homeless they will become depressed and dejected which it might sometimes to some people lead them into suicide. So that was a similar situation that humanity, you and I, was in. And that was why Jesus said, God sent his only begotten son Jesus. So that's a huge consequence for this debt and this position we find ourselves. In Romans chapter 6 verse 23 it says, For the wages of sin is debt. You see, that debt is like a separation from God, an eternal separation from God, an eternal separation for the good plan the Lord has for us, for the eternal separation from His glory, eternal separation from His goodness, even in life here. So it's a huge consequence. But there is a solution. That Roman chapter 6 continues, verse 23 continues by saying that, that there is, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We owe a debt we couldn't pay. It has a huge consequence. But there is a solution. There is a gift of God through Jesus Christ available for us. Jesus came and at this period that we celebrate Good Friday, he went to the cross to pay that debt. Our hope is that the debt is paid through Jesus Christ our Lord. Today being Good Friday, we celebrate that. Or should I say for me, Best Friday, we celebrate that. Isn't that amazing? It is something to rejoice that a debt we couldn't pay that is growing every day. Jesus came to pay it, to restore us to that relationship with God. Bible says he came that we might have life and have it to the full. Hallelujah. That is the solution. That is the good news. So in line with this, we've looked at the debt we owe, we couldn't pay, we look at the consequences of that debt, but we've seen a solution, Jesus, that was sent to pay the price for you and I. So looking at this, what should our response be? The scripture tells us that as well. In Romans chapter 10, from verse 9 to, to 11, it says, If we declare with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Isn't that interesting? It's just like saying, you owe a debt that you couldn't pay. The debt is growing every day. It has a huge consequence that you will lose whatever you have, even your own life. But the solution is that someone has come to pay that debt. Then your response should be to accept that payment. To recognize that payment, to acknowledge that payment, to reach out, to receive the receipt that proves that that payment has been made. And how do you do that? Bible says, with your mouth you declare that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is your Savior. Jesus has, has come and you are receiving him and you are acknowledging that that debt he has paid, you are accepting it. He said, and you believe in your heart that God raised him for his dead. He died to pay the price for sin. Remember where we started in Romans uh, 3, he said the wages, the, where we looked at the consequence of this debt that we, pay, that we are owing in Romans 6, he said the wages of sin is death. 
not that death hanging, that death hanging over her neck will lead to that death. Amen. But here, he said, when we believe in our heart that God raised him for the, from the dead, we will be saved. It's like we exchange our death for the life that Jesus has come to give. You know, sometimes it is referred to as divine exchange. Our position of falling short of the glory of God that will lead us to death. Jesus came. He died to make that payment and bring us to his own life. So believe in your heart that Jesus raised him from the dead. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. You believe it. You believe that that, that death that you cannot pay, that is growing every day, that will lead you to death, has been paid. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and you are saved. And you profess it. You acknowledge it. You believe it. You acknowledge it. And you profess it. You declare it. Amen. The same thing in Romans chapter 10 verse 13. It says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you recognize that he made that payment, you call out to him. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I accept the payment you have made to reconcile me with God through your death. If you call out, the name of the Lord in this man, the Bible says, you will save. And, and when you do that, what follows? Romans chapter 5 tells us that. In Romans chapter 5 from verse 1 to 2, it said, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we acknowledge him, when we accept the payment that he has made on our behalf, as we celebrate this Easter weekend, as we uh, worship him, as we celebrate today, my best Friday, we are reaching out to receive his payment and the justification that he has given unto us by faith. He said, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God because we are reconciled with God. We have peace with Him. We have peace. Our sins are no more barrier between us and God because Jesus has taken it away. Access has been given us, has been given to us into His holy place where He stands. We have access into his presence. We have access into his will. We have access into all that he has provided for us. He said, Whom we have peace through God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom we also, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace. In which we now stand. We gain access into his grace. We gain access into that unmerited favor. In which we now stand. So when you accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. You gain access into his grace. Where you now stand. So you stand in his grace. Because he paid the price for you and I. Finally Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Now says that therefore. There is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now there is no condemnation. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for you as you recognize that that debt you cannot pay that is growing every day, Jesus has paid it. And as you accept him as your Lord and Savior and having access into his grace where you will not stand, there is therefore no condemnation for you because he has paid the price. You, are now, you now stand in his grace and walk with him as he takes you through this journey of life until when he returns to take us home to be with him forever. So as we celebrate Good Friday, rejoice. That debt that we couldn't pay, Jesus has paid for it. That life that we can never assess by our own self, 
Jesus has given us access into it. And as we celebrate, can I invite you to make that same decision this evening by acknowledging that you are, you are in serious debt that cannot be. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is that's the situation that you are in. You are in a debt that you cannot pay. But Jesus has paid that debt. If this evening as you pray, you just pray with me and accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, ask Him to come into your heart, to be your Lord and be your Savior. And every Thing he has died to purchase for you, you will receive in Jesus' name. He was wounded for your sins. He was bruised for your iniquity. The punishment that brought you peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. It's available for you. Only if you believe it, you confess it with your believe it in your heart, confess it with your mouth, you will be saved, and you will have access to that grace where you cannot stand where you can now stand and confess in confidence that there is now no condemnation for you because you are in Christ Jesus. You have been, you, we have been, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for today. It is indeed the best Friday that Jesus came, that we celebrate the coming of Jesus to die a gruesome death on the cross, to pay that debt that we cannot pay, that is growing every day. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your plans for our lives. We thank you, oh God, for reconciling us back to yourself. Lord, I pray this evening that anyone listening that is connected, oh God, that have not acknowledged their position, as to reach out to receive Jesus, that this evening as the lesson, Lord, you will touch their hearts to pray, to believe this word and to pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you died for me. I believe I owe a debt that I cannot pay that is dragging me down every day. But recognizing that you came, oh God, and died to reconcile me to yourself, Lord, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe it in my heart. I confess it with my heart. Jesus, you are my Lord. You died and you rose, you rose up again to reconcile me to with the Father. And I said, thank you. Thank you. And for you that have received Jesus as your Lord, I just pray for you. That everything that Jesus has purchased for you, you start working in the fullness of it in Jesus' name. Whatever have limited you up till now, I pray by the mighty name of our Lord that those things will begin to be uprooted. You will be, you, you will be strengthened to overcome them that you might experience the life that Jesus has delivered unto you and I. And Lord, we just thank you for this. Thank you, O oh Lord. It's not by our power, it's not by our mind, but you chose. Why we were here sinners, you died to reconcile us unto yourself. Lord, I will say thank you. As we celebrate today, we say thank you. We remember this and we live, O oh God, to please you for such a great redemption. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. The blood that Jesus shed for me
Thanks for joining our online service, Hope From Home, today. We hope you were encouraged and blessed. Here are a few announcements from Hope Church. Easter with Hope will continue this Sunday for our Easter Sunday service at 1030 a.m. on Facebook or YouTube. We will be having our monthly prayer meeting this Wednesday, the 7th of April at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. Message us for the link. Hope Youth is meeting on Zoom now every Friday at 7.30 p.m. Message for the link and don't miss out. If you would like to still give your tithes and offerings, you can give online. The details are on the screen. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more details. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hope Church Ennis, for more Hope from Home online services. Thanks again for joining us and have a blessed week.